Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome in-person students, online students, and our e-learning students as well. Um, thank you for joining class this morning. Um, last Monday, we began looking at um, uh, Second Timothy chapter two. We'll continue looking at that. Uh, we'll continue our study on Second Timothy chapter two. Uh, before that, we'll begin with a word of prayer. So, can I ask uh, Charles? Can you please lead us in prayer, please? All right. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this morning. Uh, it's an afternoon for others and it's a night for others, but we marvel at your grace and love and connectivity. Thank you, Lord, for connecting us from different parts of the world. And now that we are together again, Lord, we pray that you abide in us and we abide in you, that you will direct our thoughts and give us more insights so that we shall learn your word and be able to edify the church that you have placed in our hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Charles. So um, we uh, looked at Second um, Timothy chapter 2, uh, verses 1 to 13. Uh, we'll continue from verse 14 onwards. So can one of you please read Second um, uh, Timothy chapter 2, verse 14, please? Verse 14. Uh, remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord, and not to strive about words to no profit to the ruin of the hearers. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you, Charles. So here we see that Paul is again, you know, he, he uh, at different points or junctions of his uh, uh, letter, he uh, keeps uh, making the statement, you know, remind them of these things, teach them of these uh, things. So, uh, he's even as he's writing this to uh, Timothy, it's a more personal letter, but he's saying, uh, even as I'm saying some of these things to you, it's important that you also teach it uh, to the church, to the saints, to the believers, and also remind them of these things. So he's saying, you know, after he's reminded him of the essential points of the gospel uh, in, uh, in the same chapter in verse 8, in verses 11 to 13, in verse 8, he says, uh, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David, who was raised from the dead according to my gospel. And uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 to 13, where he says, If he died with him, we all just the preceding verses, uh, which we studied last week, which we ended off last week. For if he died with him, we shall also live with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. So he's saying, you know, remind them of these things which I'm writing to you, uh, even as you preach the gospel, teach the gospel, remind your hearers of um, uh, these things. So as, uh, as a pastor, Timothy's job is to keep his congregation always focused on the gospel and not, you know, deviate into... Uh, uh, discussions, unnecessary discussions and arguments uh, uh, that will uh, uh, about false doctrines, false teachings that will lead to strife and division and all of those things. So he's saying, you know, uh, just teach and exhort uh, the truth in God's word uh, so that people, you know, um, uh, sorry, so teach and exhort God's people to stay uh, you know, aligned to God's truth, his doctrines, um, and, you know, don't engage in useless things, fighting over words, ideas, arguments that do not bring any benefit. Okay, we'll move on to verse 15. So can one of you please read verse 15, please? Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker, who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Thank you. Um, so here he says, you know, be diligent, uh, which means he's saying, you know, be focused um, 
and you know, uh, be diligent, be focused, which is an ongoing, uh, continuous work uh, that must be pursued uh, carefully uh, with earnestness. And he's saying, you know, be diligent about three things which he mentions uh, uh, in this verse. He says, be diligent, um, you know, to present yourself approved of God. Be diligent as a worker who does not need to be ashamed and be diligent about rightly dividing the truth. So he's being diligent means he's saying be focused on these things. Uh, it must be something that is ongoing, something that is continuous, uh, something that you need to pursue very carefully and earnestly. So the first thing he says to be diligent here in this verse is you know, uh, to uh, present oneself or to present yourself approved to God, which means, you know, live in a manner that is right before God, uh, you know, uh, walk in a way that is right, the way you do things, the way you say things, the way you react, your attitudes, um, let it all be in a manner that is approved of God, That which means which is right before God. The second thing that one needs to be diligent about is, you know, be a worker who's not uh, ashamed of the gospel, who's not ashamed of his calling, who's not ashamed of the work that God has entrusted uh, to him or her. Okay, so don't be ashamed. Um, so work in a way that, you know, uh, you also need not be ashamed before God. Uh, he's already mentioned that, you know, uh, do not be ashamed of the gospel. Do not be ashamed of me as a prisoner. Uh, do not be ashamed of, uh, you know, what calling that you have. And so here he's saying, you know, um, be a worker who does not need to be ashamed. Uh, that means work in a way that you need not be ashamed before God. Uh, fulfill the calling that God has given to you. Uh, you know, be faithful, be committed, be sincere um, with what God has entrusted you with, with God, what God has asked you to uh, do. And the third thing which he says be diligent about is to rightly divide the word of God. So he says be careful, you know, with the way you handle God's word, uh, make a straight cut. Uh, you know, which means, uh, or rightly dissect, uh, which means that, you know, there is a right way and there is a wrong way uh, to understand the Bible, to interpret the Bible and to teach it. So if you understand the Bible and you interpret it in the right way, then you will be teaching it in the right way. But if you understand and interpret the Bible in the wrong way, then you will be teaching it in the wrong way. So, you know, uh, uh, as a pastor, he's telling Timothy, you, know, you must work hard, especially in this area where you must work hard, uh, you know, uh, to uh, to interpret God's word uh, in its entirety, in its truth, uh, and master the right interpretation. Now, even as um, Paul is writing this to Timothy, it's also so relevant for us um, as ministers of God, you know, as those who have been called as his saints, his uh, his priests, the royal priesthood we are. Uh, so it's important for us to be focused. And it's not something that we just do it when uh, we feel uh, good or when we feel uh, excited about serving God or when we, we are in a place where everything is going well. But even when things are not uh, going according to uh, what we want it to go or it's not feeling we don't feel good or we don't feel right but it should be uh, you know we need to be diligent which means it should be an ongoing continuous thing that we carefully pursue uh, with all earnestness so even as we who are called the ministers of God we need to be diligent in the way we um, you know, uh, do things uh, uh, the way we live our life, the way we walk, the way we talk, the, our attitudes. Uh, we need to do it in a manner that's right before God, um, you know, that is pleasing and approved of uh, God. And also, you know, that um, uh, we uh, do things in a way that you know, will not bring shame to uh, uh, to his name, uh, you know, to his uh, to the body of Christ. 
uh, and also that God will not be ashamed um, of the way that we are going ahead with our lives. And, you know, we would, when we do things that are right, we would not be ashamed before God and that we would fulfill his calling and what God has asked us to uh, do. And even as we are called ministers of God, it's important that we learn uh, the tools of interpreting God's word in the right way uh, so that, you know, uh, we can understand it in the right way and we will be able to teach um, uh, God's truth in the right way. And then in, in that way, we will be carefully handling um, God's word. Okay. So three areas where we need to be diligent about in our own lives as well. Verses 16, 17 and 18. Can one of you please read that, please? Um, shall I read? Yes, please, Rupa. Thank you. But avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness. And their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Phineas and Philetus, who have served from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. They're upsetting the faith of some. Amen. So here he's saying, you know, again, reminding him, don't involve in idle, silly talk and arguments, uh, you know, in just uh, discussing with these false teachers because they have no other job. Uh, you know, they just don't even know the truth. They're just doing all this, he says, because they're peddlers of uh, the gospel in terms of, you know, they just want to make money. Uh, so don't, you know, waste your time uh, involving in idle, silly talk. And then he talks about, uh, you know, these two men, Hymenius and Philetus. Uh, we do not know anything much about these men, but, um, uh, you know, Paul does mention about Hymenius in First Timothy chapter 1, verse 20, uh, where he says that he has handed him over to Satan. And um, But what he's saying here is, you know, these men uh, are just engaging in useless, ungodly talk and... Uh, and even as they are talking and discussing uh, with different people, they are, you know, uh, spreading wrong teachings, false teachings, false doctrines, uh, and it's spreading like cancer. You know, cancer just spreads so fast, so quickly, and it just uh, destroys, um, uh, uh, you know, the body, destroys the cell, destroys the whole organ, and ultimately takes uh, the person's life as well. Uh, so here it says, you know, um, their, their teaching is just spreading like anything. It's so destructive. Uh, it's destroying the faith of so many people. And uh, Paul has already dealt with uh, Hymenius in uh, First Timothy. And he says, you know, these people have gone away from the truth. They're teaching false doctrines. And they're also leading others uh, away from the Truth. So what is the false doctrine that he's, they are teaching? He mentions about it. He's saying that, you know, they're saying that the resurrection is already past. That means they're saying that, uh, you know, the resurrection is already finished. Uh, there's no resurrection to take place. That means they're saying that, you know, it's a possibility that they're already living in the millennium kingdom. And hence they are overthrowing uh, the faith of um, uh, people. So we don't know anything much about the doctrine they're teaching. Just that, you know, they're saying that th there's no more resurrection that's going to happen. It's already done. It's completed. And now we are living in the millennium uh, uh, kingdom. Okay. Um, so that he's saying, you know, don't involve in discussing with all of these people who have caught up in this lies, in this false doctrine. But you teach them the truth from God's word so that their eyes are opened uh, to the truth, their um, ears are open to the truth, and the Holy Spirit will work in them and, you know, would uh, bring them back to the uh, faith. So he's saying do what is important is to preach and teach the uh, gospel. Verses 19 to 21, can one of you please read that? God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone. With its with this inscription, the Lord knows those who are in, and all who belong to the Lord must turn away 
from evil. In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourselves pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean, and you will be ready for the master's use for the master to use you for every good work amen thank you say so here he says nevertheless the solid foundation of god stands having the seal which means says no matter what these false teachers are teaching no matter their uh, whether their message even spreads like cancer uh, and even though the faith of some have been overthrown, uh, it doesn't matter how many have fallen away, how many of them reject the truth, uh, how many of them have gone uh, their own way after this profane and vain babbling. But he makes something very clear to Paul. He says, the kingdom of God cannot be shaken. So these false teachers will come, they'll go, their teachings will, uh, you know, spread like cancer. People would... Uh, uh, reject the truth, will receive their uh, teaching, will fall away. Uh, many of them will go on this way of profane and ba vain babblings or teachings, uh, which makes no sense, which is just uh, mere talk. But he says, irrespective of that, you know, the kingdom of God cannot be uh, shaken. So he's basically encouraging Timothy and saying that, you know, um, all of these things uh, have no lasting impact. Uh, we have seen many false teachers come, go, doctrines come, go. Uh, but uh, we have seen that the word of God, uh, the kingdom of God, uh, you know, and the truth uh, about who God is uh, cannot be shaken, uh, will never change. It will stand uh, forever. So he's saying that you have uh, an upper hand. You have, uh, 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 you're in a better place. You are uh, also having a privilege of, you know, building this kingdom of uh, ministering in this kingdom and also teaching these truths in this kingdom. Uh, so he's saying, you know, uh, be strong. Uh, don't be shaken by all of these things. Don't be overwhelmed uh, by all of these people and their teachings. Uh, you just teach the truth. And, you know, because God's kingdom cannot be uh, shaken. And then he says that, you know, he says, having the seal, uh, and he makes the statement where the Lord knows those who are his and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from uh, iniquity. Now, uh, commentators, com uh, commentary writers say that these two statements are taken from, uh, you know, the rebellion of Korah against Moses and uh, Joshua, which we read in Numbers chapter 16, verse 5. Um, and, you know, uh, Korah and the people came and said, uh, told Moses and Joshua, now, are you only have, are you the only people who have the opportunity to stand before uh, the sanctuary and, you know, uh, uh, offer incense and all of these sacrifice to God? So uh, when Moses hears this, he says, the Lord will show who is his and who is holy and will bring him near to himself, even the one whom he will choose. So uh, Numbers chapter 16 was um, a fight. And then we see that, you know, um, God was so angry with uh, uh, Korah uh, and he chooses, he chooses uh, Moses um, and he rejects Korah. And uh, he in, in uh, the same chapter, uh, Numbers chapter 16, verse 26, you know, he warns uh, the people because he's going to... Um, uh, destroy Korah and his family, everything that is uh, uh, belongs to him. And he wants the congregation to depart from the tents of these wicked men uh, before God destroyed them. So Moses saying, you know, get, get away from their tents of these men who rebelled against God, who spoke against God. Um, and, you know, uh, so that, you know, when God destroys them, you too will not be uh, destroyed. So it's true, yes, that God knows those who are his, but, you know, he also calls those who are his, his 
to leave uh, their life of sin, you know, not to please their sinful uh, nature, not to walk according to the dictates of the flesh, uh, not to please their sinful carnal uh, nature, but to please their um, uh, spiritual nature, the spirit man, um, and to walk in the spirit and to uh, live in the uh, spirit. And so he says, you know, uh, God gave us the solid foundation, uh, which is his word. And it is important for us to focus uh, on it. And uh, God knows who are is his, which means he knows who is going to stand uh, for him. He knows who is going to fall away, uh, who are going to reject the truth, who are going to go away their own way. He knows uh, because he's God. Uh, he knows, uh, he, he, he sees uh, but he's saying that those who he, uh, are his, he's calling them uh, to a greater level of uh, uh, responsibility, a greater level uh, of, uh, you know, calling that he has placed on their life. Uh, and that is to be holy as uh, he is holy, as God is holy. And so he's saying, you know, for those of them who... Uh, God has called, uh, which means he, those who he knows has received his calling, his salvation. He says, leave your life of sin behind. That means don't get, go back into that life of sin. Don't get involved in your sinful nature or don't go back to please your sinful nature, uh, but live and walk in the spirit. Okay. Um, and then he goes on to give a, a very beautiful uh, analogy here, an analogy of utensils that we use at home. Uh, you know, uh, at home we have utensils which we use for everyday use, uh, which is, you know, uh, for everyday ordinary use, which we use day by day. And then there are special vessels that we have, uh, of our special crockery that we have, which we use for special occasions, special purposes, when we have guests at home, uh, special days, uh, you know, when we use uh, these um, uh, special vessels or the crockery that we have. And, you know, uh, so when people come home, we have guests, uh, uh, you know, we use all of these utensils with, uh, you know, with great pride. Uh, and we put them on display and because it just looks so beautiful and uh, so uh, so some of them are so uh, you know uh, well designed uh, uh, and it just adds beauty to the whole uh, uh, you know uh, dining table the dinner table you know or the lunch table whatever and you know so the owner with pride puts all of these uh, you know special vessels that he has uh, on display uh, even as he uses it uh, to serve his the guests that he invites special people that he is invite invited uh, uh, to their place and uh, to serve them the special food that he uh, or she has uh, prepared so you know uh, Paul is saying here that, you know, we need to be those vessels uh, for honor, you know, that um, meaning that we need to be those vessels that we can, can be used for special purposes, uh, for honorable use, uh, and be those vessels of honor means, you know, be a vessel that brings honor to uh, God. So if you want to be that vessel that God wants to use, which God wants to put on display, that he wants to release uh, his special purposes, then there are four things that, you know, uh, 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 that we need to uh, meet these four requirements. There are four requirements and four things that we need to meet these uh, requirements to be that vessel of honor. So, you know, we can either choose to be those ordinary vessels of course, you know, we can be ordinary vessels, God can use us, uh, but we can also desire or strive or, uh, you know, want to be that vessels of uh, uh, honor uh, where we can be used for special purposes, for honorable use, be those vessels that, you know, bring honor to God, uh, be those vessels where we would want God to use us uh, uh, 
to you know uh, use us in a special way in a powerful way where he would want to put us on display uh, where he would want to release uh, his uh, divine special purposes that he has in plan in store for his people for his church and for uh, the nation or the nation so there are four things uh, four important requirements if we need to be a vessel of honor so it's not just that we desire and say yeah you know i want to be that vessel of honor uh, where you know god puts me on display that he just uh, releases his power the, uh, all the gifts of the spirit is just flowing through me uh, and display the special purposes in and through me yes we can desire it we can ask him we can pray but also, even as it's going to be an awesome privilege for us, it's also a great responsibility, something that we need to also work alongside uh, with God. So what are the four requirements? The first thing is uh, we need to be cleansed. Uh, Yes, when we are born again, we are all washed away from our sins. Uh, you know, the old is gone, the new is come, we are a new creation. Yes, all that is true, but we uh, we need to know that or understand that we have been made new in our spirit man. We still have our, you know, our physical uh, nature, our flesh, uh, our mind, our will, our emotions that need uh, to be uh, you know, renewed, that need to be transformed into Christ-likeness. And that's why God's word says we need to work out our salvation uh, with fear and trembling every day. So, you know, we need to, which means we need to every day be conscious uh, of, uh, you know, uh, cleansing ourselves in areas where we need cleansing, areas where we need cleansing, you know, areas where we need to depart um, from sin, um, depart uh, or, you know, uh, bring those areas under the Lordship of Christ Jesus, submit to him um, uh, so that we are not vessels of dishonor, uh, but we are cleansed, we are purified in those areas uh, you know, where we can be, uh, 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 you know, living lives that are honoring in God's sight. The second thing is uh, be sanctified, which means make a conscious everyday effort uh, to be set apart for the Lord in what we watch, in how we spend our time, uh, in the way that we, uh, where we go, uh, or, you know, uh, the, the kind of people that we are engaging in, you know, just set ourselves apart for the Lord uh, so that, you know, um, uh, we are uh, sanctified, we are holy, and also sanctify the members or the parts of our body uh, to God uh, for righteousness and uh, holiness, whether it's sanctifying your mind, it's sanctifying your uh, tongue, your mouth, uh, it's sanctifying your desires, sanctifying your uh, sexual appetites, all of those things so that it will be pure and so that you will be pure and holy, set apart for God so that you can be that vessel of honor uh, where God will just... Uh, uh, you know, pours out his power, uh, his special purposes, so that you can be on uh, display for God to display his glory uh, and uh, manifest his um, uh, glorious presence and what he does. Also, the next requirement, the third thing is be useful, uh, which means be readily available. Uh, for what God wants you to do. Sometimes uh, we want to be those vessels of honor, but we uh, in the areas that we think we want to be, in the in the ministry that we think we want to be, but God has different plans, may have different plans for us than what we are thinking or anticipating. So we need to just be available um, uh, to what God is calling us to, available to what God is asking us to do. Uh, it might be a challenging area. It can be a difficult area. It cannot be somewhere where, you know, something that... Uh, we would be on display where everybody will see, identify us, um, you know, notice us, or we might be just doing something very small uh, where people will not even know what we are doing, see what we are doing, but, you know, God will use us to impact uh, the sheep that he has entrusted um, uh, to us. So, you know, just be available wherever God wants you, uh, God wants to use you. 
uh, and you know be available to be easily used by God. The fourth requirement is be prepared. That means be equipped, uh, be ready. Okay, so even as you are getting equipped now, uh, it's yes, it's important that you attend these um, three hours of lecture every day, but that's not enough. That's not sufficient. It's important to go back, you know, look through your notes, study it, uh, you know, so that it's these truths are uh, just um, uh, so ingrained uh, in you, in your um, it's just your solid foundation that you are building uh, so that when God launches you out to minister, to teach, uh, you are so equipped in his word uh, and you will be those who rightly uh, dissect or dissect or, you know, rightly divide the word of truth. You're able to interpret uh, his truth and uh, teach it, which will be a blessing uh, to uh, many. So if you look at uh, this uh, verse, it, um, in verse... Um, uh 21 it says you know therefore if anyone so it's not that you know uh, god chooses some for um uh, to be vessels of honor and some for you know just to, for ordinary use but uh, here it says that anyone who desires so you know any one of you who desires to be that vessel of honor uh you know, uh, you have this opportunity before you to be that vessel of honor. It's open to all. So what you need to do is just work on those four requirements and then you will become that uh, vessel of uh, uh, honor. Remember uh, in verse 1, it says, uh, uh, Paul says, you know, we can, it's, it's, we are able to minister this gospel, teach this gospel, to be this ministers of God uh, because of the grace that is in Christ uh, Jesus. So you would have the grace of Christ Jesus that will enable you to be uh, these vessels of honor. So it's a choice that you make. So don't even think that, hey, God has chosen some people to be vessels of honor and some people to be vessels of a lower category uh, no, it's the choice that that person has made. Uh, that person is striving. That person is pursuing the things of God, uh, you know, constantly cleansing themselves, sanctifying themselves, being useful, being available, being prepared. And that is why you see them as vessels of honor. It's not that God has not chosen you. It's not that he's called some for noble use, some for, you know, for lesser use. Uh, but it's a choice that we all make and it's available for anyone uh, this opportunity so if you desire to be that vessel of honor you know uh, work on these four requirements and god will use you in a mighty way okay uh, any questions so far okay if there's no questions we'll move on to verses 22 to 26 can one of you please read verses 22 to verse 26 please Verse 22 to 26, flee also youthful lusts, but, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, and those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, and patient. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Amen. Thank you, Christopher. So um, here, you know, uh, Paul is saying in, in the view of becoming that vessel of honor, you know, we have only one choice and that is to stay away from ungodly lust and instead we need to pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace. So if you want to be that vessel of honor, yes, it's it's a it's a opportunity that we have. It's a privilege that we have, but it's also something that oh, we need to. Uh, it's a responsibility that you know that we take of staying away from 
all lustful, ungodly passions, things of this world, and we instead pursue righteousness, faith, love, and uh, peace. And he says, you know, uh, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So he says, do this uh, with those who call on the Lord with a pure heart, which means, you know, the idea here is do it with the uh, Others were also uh, in the same uh, desire, the same mindset, uh, people who are pursuing God, uh, who are, uh, you know, staying away from ungodly lust, you know, um, with the community of people who are also doing the same. Uh, so, you know, so there's an idea here of togetherness and community. So he's saying, do it with those who uh, are pursuing all of these things. So he says, yes, in the church, I know, Timothy, there are some who are, you know, have shipwrecked their faith, some who are teaching the wrong doctrines, uh, some who are listening to them. So, uh, you know, that isn't one, that's one group. And there is one group, you know, who is um, uh, pursuing uh, righteousness, faith, love, and peace, who are holding on to the truth of God's uh, word, you know, stay with them, uh, be along with them. Uh, and he's, and uh, so here he's just basically uh, meaning, uh, you know, to have a sense of togetherness, a community of people who are doing the same thing. And he says, so we live out of uh, uh, live out our life in community along with others who are doing the same thing. So uh, even in, you know, it's important for us to, uh, even as we're pursuing all of these things, uh, that we pursue uh, it along with those who are also pursuing the same thing that we are uh, so that we can be edified, we can be encouraged, we can be strengthened. So you can strengthen others who are pursuing the same call of God, the same uh, things in life. Um, and they can also, through their life, through their testimonies, through their experience, can also impart into your life and you are edified um, and built. So if you want to be the vessel of honor, then we need to also be along with those who uh, are of the same mindset, uh, same thinking and pursuing uh, the same things. And verse 23, he says, Don't avo but avoid foolish and ignorant uh, uh, disputes knowing that they generate strife uh, he has um, uh, already spoken so much about this he keeps saying this at different points in his letter just reiterating this truth uh, and then he says you know um, uh, uh, Timothy there will be people who will oppose you there will be people who oppose the gospel there will be people who will oppose uh, uh, Jesus Christ but how do you handle them the first thing is just avoid uh, discussing with them uh, disputing with them because it's not going to bring any good it's just going to bring division and strife so the first thing you need to do is don't get into a foolish argument or disputes with them the second thing is he he says that you know uh, the servant of god uh, must not quarrel must not get into strife but must be gentle and patiently teaching people so he say don't argue don't discuss with them don't get into foolish uh, talk with them but what you need to do is you need to teach them uh, the truth from God's word. And even as you teach it, you know, don't do it in a way that is ang you are angry with them or you're irritated with them or you're frustrated with them that, hey, you know, I've been teaching you these same truths and you don't seem to be listening. You seem to be so ignorant. Uh, you seem to be, you know, avoiding these things. But he says, be patient, be gentle with them, teaching them. Uh, and, you know, uh, even as you teach them uh, and you're correcting them to your teaching, your preaching, correct them in humility, um, uh, even uh, with those who are opposing you, do that in gen teach them in gentleness, you know, uh, be uh, 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 humble with before them, uh, correct them in love, because he, he, he says why you need to be gentle, why you need to be patient with them, uh, why you need to, uh, you know, uh, be uh, uh, teaching them in a sense of humility is because he's saying they have been taken captive by the devil. OK, so they're not in their right mindset. The, the, the evil one has blinded their eyes, has veiled their eyes from the truth. Uh, and um, and it's, uh, you know, it's his his power that is working in them. 
uh, and that they are so blinded to the truth that they're just going behind these false teachings. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the saints in hell or devil has taken captive of them and they have become a snare of the devil. And hence, you know, um, you can't, the, the more you argue, the more you discuss with them, it's going to be uh, uh, effortless. It's going to be fruitless. It's not going to get to any point uh, because, you know, they have been taken snare by the devil. They're, they're captives of the, uh, of the evil one. And, but you, you know, teach them with gentleness, in love, in all humility, uh, so that, you know, um, they come to this place of repentance, they embrace the truth. It's because the Holy Spirit alone can work in their uh, lives. It's not uh, how we preach, it's not how we teach, uh, it's not uh, the words that we use, it's not how we can defend the gospel, uh, how good we are at defending the gospel, but, you know, it's God who will move them to that place of repentance. It'll go, it's God, the Holy Spirit, who will help them to embrace the truth, would enlighten them with the truth, would bring them to the knowledge of the truth, uh, so that when they come to their senses, you know, and they come out of the, dev, uh, the snares of the devil, um, uh, you know, they would know what is right and wrong. They would know the truth. They would receive the truth. And so he says, this is how, you know, as a servant of God, you must handle those who oppose the gospel. Be patient with them. Be gentle with them. Be loving with them. Uh, and uh, don't, uh, you know, uh, be rude or nasty with them, uh, but correct them in humility. This is something that, uh, you know, we can learn as well because we will have many people uh, you know, who have known the truth uh, and who know kind of go away into false talk, cult groups or teachings or doctrines. And then, you know, we get so angry with them. We can, we can say, you know, why do we even have to speak to them? You know, they know the truth and uh, they've gone away from the truth. So it makes no sense even just talking to them. Uh, because, you know, if you do, they're just going to start an argument and things like that. Uh, but you just show them love, just be gentle with them, uh, you know, teach them in a loving, patient way so that God can work in their lives to bring them to a place of uh, repentance and for them to embrace um, uh, the truth so that they will come to the knowledge of the truth again and they would embrace it. Okay, this is this also shows us the importance of prayer. Um, you know, while we do our part in sharing uh, the truth uh, in God's word, we do it in love, in gentleness, in patience. Uh, we also need to pray for people, engage in prayer for in people, uh, so that you know, um, even as they're listening to your message, even as they're listening to the truth you know, uh, that uh, God would work in their lives, the Holy Spirit would work in their lives, would quicken that word in their lives, and that they would uh, overcome the snare of the enemy uh, that is over their lives, and they would just embrace the truth, and the truth will set them free, okay? So he just very beautifully puts it in these uh, last few uh, verses, how he just connects everything, and um, how he tells him, uh, you know, how he needs to, even as he focuses on preaching and teaching the truths in the gospel, you know, how he needs to do it um, as well. So we see that, uh, you know, Paul, um, as a preacher, as a teacher, as a writer, he's so uh, detailed in everything that he has to say, he has to teach, he has to um he has to impart. And so we learn something uh, wonderful from uh, Paul's life that even as we teach God's word or we, pe we are people who love to write, we are writing the, uh, uh, you know, uh, about God's word, truths in God's word, you know, it's important for us to focus, focus on every detail, uh, every little aspect and, uh, you know, uh, bring that to light uh, so that people uh, can uh, can know can understand and uh, the truth that can be will be that is imparted to them the Holy Spirit will just work in their lives and the truth will set them free. Okay, so that is chapter two of Second Timothy. Um, uh, our key takeaway was here says you know, therefore if anyone cleanses himself from the latter he will be a vessel of honor sanctified and useful for the master prepared for every good work. So 
I hope you desire to be that vessel of honor and meet those four requirements so that you can be used mightily um, by God who's waiting to use you uh, to impact uh, your city, your community, um, the nation, and the nations of the world. Okay, any questions anyone has? Any questions? Okay, if there's no questions, then we'll move on to chapter three. So can one of you, we have five minutes before our break, can one of you please read chapter three, please, for us, while the others can open our Bibles and follow along? Second uh, Timothy chapter three. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, uh, disobedient to parents, unfaithful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, hote, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying, it, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Pastor, I continue and I finish the whole chapter? Yes, please, you can read till the end of the chapter, Charles. Thank you. <clears throat> Verse 6, For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambre the resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their fully will be manifest to all as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch. And out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes. And all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impositors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being... ...have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Thank you for reading uh, chapter 3 for us. Uh, so we'll begin our study, um, chapter 3. Anyone has any questions? Uh, again, uh, about chapter 2, any doubts, anything that you need for the clarification or clarity on? Okay, I uh, miss seeing the VS notes. Uh, we have a children's program, yes, it's called Avana uh, in our churches, which is based on this verse, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, approved uh, work, uh, men of God are not ashamed. Yes, thank you, um, Divya. Okay, there's no questions on chapter 2. We'll move on to chapter 3, uh, verses 1 to 5. 
Um, so Paul is here speaking about the end times and uh, he's telling Timothy that uh, you know, the last days will be uh, perilous times, will be very troublesome times, will be very uh, difficult times. Um, and he says that uh, things are going to get bad. Uh, it's going to be really bad in, these, uh, in the last days, the, la uh, the end times. And he's describing the nature of people uh, in the last days, okay? Uh, we'll stop here, we'll go for a break, and then we'll come back and uh, continue looking at, uh, you know, uh, the nature of people that he describes in the last days. Okay, we'll go for a break, have a good break, and see you after the break.